And 24 companies within the S&P 500 actually have female CEOs. Why is that? Why is it so low? I, it's pretty upsetting. I, I heard that stat yesterday as I was getting ready to talk today, and um, I'm surprised we haven't made more progress, particularly in light of what the earlier segment was about more women entering the workforce. Um, you know, William Sonoma, I guess we're in an oasis because it's not an issue for us. Um, we, we have great representation. Um, we have gender parity, and it's not, you know, a single thing. It's, it's everything we do. And as you said earlier, we're, you know, we're over 55 percent at the senior management level and on the board. And um, we're very fo focused on performance, um, which I think well, is the I'm... big differentiator. Sorry, go on. No, you go, go ahead. Uh, I, I, Laura, I was reading an interview you did uh, online with CNBC a, a few months back, and you spoke there about the importance of, of role models. Uh, and the fact that you at your company do have gender equality, does it make it sort of self-fulfilling mm -hmm. that the role models exist uh, and then the promotions come based on, on that kind of performance? I think it must, right? Be, um, because people feel more comfortable. They have different types of uh, role models to look up to different types of women, different types of men, and they can see themselves, and so they're not so busy being self-conscious about how they, they act, and they can focus more on their performance versus just presentation, which sometimes can get in the way of really doing the substantive thing. You know, one issue I've been looking at, Laura, specifically is consumer companies and a mind boggling number of them actually don't have women on boards or in management. You cater to consumers buying at Williams Sonoma, buying at West Elm. What sort of decisions does that help you make and, and how do you connect with your consumer? I mean, you have to have management and boards that reflect the diversity of your customer base, right? And if there's 50 percent women in the world, one would think there should be 50% working, 50% in management, 50% on boards. I mean, it's just the easy math. Um, and I think that when you reflect what's happening out there, you're going to get more knowledge about what people want and what the consumer trends are. Laura, we wanted to switch and talk big picture a little bit about Williams uh, Sonoma. And uh, you've always had a bit of a price premium to your brand and, and, and a sort of quality premium in consumers' eyes. Is maintaining that today harder than ever before because of the threats from uh, online, but also from big brands like uh, whether it's online Amazon or offline Walmart, uh, bringing in their own types of products to, to rival those of your own? The most important thing is to have differentiation. And I really believe that increasingly customers care about sustainability. And it's not just about being premium, it's about sustainable luxury, it's about premium that is sustainable. And what does that mean? It does mean that you have to have a clean supply chain. It means that you have to use great materials, you have to take care of the people who make the products that you're um, bringing to market. And I'm thrilled, we just won 24 um, named in Barron sustainable companies. And we were the number four in, in consumer and we we're the only home furnishings retailer on the list this year. You know, uh, we were talking to Jim Cramer about the name, and, and he mentioned digital sales. You know, you're one of the retailers that's powering your overall growth through e-commerce sales. When you mm -hmm. look across the retail landscape, thinking about yourself and some of the others that are doing a good job at that, what, what differentiates you? What have you learned about trying to grow that business? I, I really think it's not about one single channel. We see the customers use the channels in different ways. They research online, they go sit on the sofa in store, they go back in line. You know, we are now, we now have buy online pick up in store, buy online ship to store. Um, it's really about the ecosystem and I think in considered products like home furnishings products, it's nice to be able to see a piece of the brand in real life and then have the confidence to go online. And um, one of the things we've been doing is really improving our digital experience to take the friction out of decorating for your house. And so over the last year, we've We've been working on our 3D visioning capabilities online and really allowing our customers to drag and drop into a, a room planner our products cross brand, which I think is pretty groundbreaking in that n no one else is doing it cross brand with the kind of breadth of assortment that we're able to offer because of our platform of brands at Williams Sonoma. Laura, I read in a Deutsche Bank analyst note that 15% of your cost of goods sold relate to imports from China. How, how has the trade war impacted your business, and, and are you hopeful of resolution in the near future? Yeah, I, um, I've, I've been talking about this um, since we heard the news. 
Um, we are vertically integrated, which means that we source and make our own goods across the world. And we have very tight relationships with our vendors. Um, and we have domestic manufacturing of upholstery. And so we have been able to shift some products out um, where it makes more sense. And then there are products that we're keeping in China because of the quality and the beauty and the pricing uh, relationship there. And so we're, we're in, I think, a better place than most. Um, of course, we'd rather not see the trade war continue. It'd be much better to have that not be on the table at all. And finally, I know you can't get into too many details with the quarter because of the quiet period, Laura, but we just got a really lousy jobs report for the month of February. We had a pretty surprising retail sales report in the month of December. What's your general take right now on the U.S. consumer? You know, I'm optimistic about the consumer. As I said earlier, I think there's a lot of room for great companies to bring sustainable, beautiful products to market. And I know people love their homes. And so we're in a, a wonderful business of um, helping people furnish their homes, teaching them how to cook, and um, to lead more enjoyable lives. And so for that reason, I, I'm, I'm pretty optimistic that um, they're going to continue to spend in our space.